better comments about the so-called littering of the moon is that all of that garbage, if we can phrase it that way, was paid for and made on Earth. So <laughs> I don't think we're leaving anything valuable there other than equipment that will give us data for years to come, as you say, with the seismometer. I was thinking that Apollo 12 was there in November of 69, and we got data from it on the S-4B impact. As somebody has said, not one dollar has been spent on the moon. Every dollar has been spent uh, here on Earth, most of it in the USA. Speaking of that S-4B impact, uh, uh, it did. It did impact, as uh, we know, but perhaps haven't reported, the third stage of the Saturn booster, uh, as scheduled, smashed into the moon with a force of 11 tons of dynamite. Uh, set up seismic waves which were recorded by the old Apollo 12 uh, equipment. Some of that is being put out now to give a, an additional amount of equipment on the moon and then when Apollo 15 puts one out we'll have a triangulated uh, system, won't we, after to, uh, to uh, judge uh, the uh, motion of the moon, uh, moon quakes, seismic events, and the uh, S-4B did its job. Hit the moon at 5,690 miles an hour, about 115 miles south-southeast of the Apollo 12 uh, uh, seismic station. It's too bad we can't call in a meteorite on, on call to do the job for us. <laughs> the one that uh, did Cone Crater probably had the explosive power of about 3,500 tons of TNT. Mm. Mm. Explore quite a bit of the lunar interior with that kind of a blast. Mm. But not too close. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know some of the scientists have wished that there'd be a little moonquake or, uh, or some rather substantial moonquakes while the astronauts are up there. Uh, they say that they wouldn't be dangerous at all to them unless they were on the edge of a crater and started a landfall of some kind, or an earthfall. It would be an earthfall, or what, a uh, moonfall. I watch your terminology here all the time. <laughs> setting up camp somewhere, this, watching this operation, unloading the old, uh, the old Essex, getting the, uh, Shepherd, uh, the tent set up. fueling the uh, ALSEP electric generator now. One hour, uh, 38 minutes since uh, cabin depressed. Now, this is a fascinating uh, bit of uh, equipment. This is that thermonuclear generator, which, uh, has a plutonium core uh, that, uh, as an isotope, uh, creates nuclear energy and uh, powers the sending station uh, and the equipment that is left on the moon. Remember on Apollo 12, Conrad uh, had to beat on the side of the container to get that uh, fuel cell out. But, uh, stuck in there. Because one of the reasons that people may not suspect that these were parked is so that they, if in some inadvertent case, would fall back on Earth. They wouldn't contaminate Earth yeah. uh, if there's an accident off the launch pad or prior to getting into orbit. And that's why it's being assembled now, so it was totally safe up until this point. And, uh, it's carried in a huge graphite and, and, uh, and steel uh, cylinder. Uh, and has to be lifted out to the, the core cell, uh, lifted out of that, and then placed into the generator so that it uh, worked. There was uh, some concern when 13 came back as to what uh, it was the first test of uh, carrying one of these back in a uh, crash situation. Of course, it was in the... Uh, uh, carried back in the uh, lunar module, but, uh, but the lunar module, never having, never, they never expected that would be brought back to Earth. No. And here it came back uh, with the Apollo 13. So there was some concern, but uh, when it uh, burned up in the atmosphere, if it did, uh, uh, this was destroyed. If not, it plunged into the ocean at one of the deepest points of the Pacific Ocean, and apparently there's been no harm from it.
It's a very low order of radioactivity anyway in this particular uh, thermonuclear generator. Well, maybe we'll get some confidence having used it on the moon so we can use something like it on the Earth with more frequency. The uh, fossil fuels aren't exactly doing the job we'd like to.
Shepard bouncing his way back uh, over to uh, the limb and to Mitchell to begin to pick up the packages uh, and to pull the this mobile transport around. Uh, loading more equipment on the mat. CBS News color coverage of today's walk on the moon will continue in a moment. Pictures live from the moon with the voices of Al Shepard and Ed Mitchell. Plus the 16 mile there. Voice you'll hear occasionally from Houston, from the manned spacecraft center there, is the capsule communicator Bruce McCandless. And I'm hoping getting ready to open SRC number one. Roger. Delta, Delta, and Echo, Echo. Take this baby up, hello? 